Welcome to the original Woodchuck Cabinet Learning Series, Frameless versus Face Frame. Episode 1, by the way. Okay, this video will reveal the following. 1. What exactly makes a cabinet frameless or face frame? 2. How frameless construction gives a little more room for storage and is easier to construct but can be more difficult to install. 3. How face frame construction can look more custom at times and is easier to adapt to some situations. 4. How the overall look and feel of the cabinetry is affected by your choice of these two methods. 5. How you can make frameless cabinetry look like face frame in set cabinetry. Okay, hopefully you're interested in those and I will go on to explain them. Okay. To start, uh, here is a face frame cabinet and it has top, bottom, and two sides. I know that's pretty obvious, but uh, here is the frame. This is the back, by the way. This It's laying on its face. So the frame over here is on the face. Therefore, it's called face frame. I don't think it's any uh, more complicated than that. And this is just showing the back side, how the frame overlaps the back side of the cabinet. That's kind of normal. So there you go. Uh, sometimes it is nailed and sometimes it's clamped the way I showed here. So that's that. And then when we get to frameless, it has no face frame, hence frameless. And then instead of a frame, a thin layer of veneer is glued to the face of the cabinet. And that's shown right here. And this is the edge banding that is put on with a machine onto the face of these edges. And that's actually done before it's assembled, so that's another advantage. The edge tape is normally very thin, approximately a 50th of an inch or 0.5 millimeter. It's, it is very thin veneer, as you can see in this picture. And it is on top of the box here. Okay, and then carcass. <laughs> Uh, the box without the frame I call a carcass. I believe other shops do the same as well but it's not a body or a dead body but it's just the body of the cabinet. Okay, very good. And here we have a frameless kitchen or part of a kitchen and the reason I'm showing this is to give you an overall idea of the look of the frameless and it can also be changed with your handles and these are a very custom handle um, Doug Mockett brand and they go all the way through the drawer front and some of them stop in the middle of the drawer front and it was that's a subject for a whole new video uh, this is cherry and flat slab just meaning it is completely flat and they are cut out of like a full sheet of plywood in this case cherry and you'll also notice that there are very small gaps between all the doors and drawer fronts that is how a frameless construction looks because it covers the box almost entirely except for the spacing between the doors and the door fronts. Okay. And here it is without the doors and door fronts on there. And each one of these is an individual box. There's one, two, three, four, five boxes screwed together, leveled on top of a toe kick what's called the toe kick, which is the base below all that. Another frameless kitchen island showing how everything is clean lines and very minimal spacing between the doors and drawer fronts. And yeah. Again, another frameless one showing you how it looks completely different with a mitered recessed panel doors and drawer fronts in this case, all lacquered white. And let's see, even the hood enclosure is custom to have the same design as the doors. All right. Here we have face frame in set. And I say in set because if you'll notice the drawer fronts and the doors are flush with the frame. They're inside the frame itself. So it is in set, inside. Okay, this one is stain grade maple. The top drawer fronts are flat with knobs. So that's just saying that this helps to make the design not so busy to make these flat and have these be recessed. 
if you look close you'll see right here there is a line and it's up here as well and that's because this was split into two boxes two cabinets this side here and this side here and it was wall to wall so with a face frame cabinet some I do what's called a shared style and what that means is that both uh, cabinets share this particular style if this box were separated you would not see a frame on it it goes behind this frame hopefully that makes sense earlier I said that the face frame are easier to install well that's because the boxes are already like together the only one we had to assemble was this one next to this one and to me once I have the toe kick down I'll probably show a separate slide of a toe kick once I have that toe kick down the box is and it's leveled the boxes go on top and it's done you don't have to screw a bunch of boxes to each other in the field and it's already very square you know with the boxes sometimes you have to shim and adjust on the wall because the wall is way off or something so you end up with longer runs having uh, a little bit of a if your cabinets aren't like perfectly square you're gonna have issues with out of uh, alignment again another frameless and this one I'm trying to show these verticals here I created a separation for this corner unit because otherwise there would be just uh, it would be very hard to have this countertop die into something it would be up against these um, the the end of the box because the drawer front covers the whole box so now I, I need a way to make a separation point I think visually it makes it look good too and this brings me back to when I was talking about you can make frameless look in set here exactly it is right here that looks in set because of that frame piece and here we're showing the face frame cabinet unfinished it is the same closet all painted up on this side and you'll see there's a like I said the rails between every drawer front and then I have no rails so here's a situation where the drawers have no rails between them so it creates more space in the drawers because if you add up these numbers inch and a half rail times four that's six inches so you gain six inches by removing those rails and you still have that face frame look and here again we have the rails in between here's an example where the rails are very narrow in order to um, minimize waste of space these are three quarters of an inch so they're done a little bit differently than most face frames so here is the base cabinet I was mentioning with the the three quarter inch rails now they are actually three inches wide so instead of like a three quarter thick frame by three quarter that would be too skinny to actually span this distance and not bow so instead I go with a very thick piece here and inside so now it can sustain a three-quarter inch rail and that's how you would do that on a face frame job you wouldn't just have a three-quarter by three-quarter rail going across here floating in space you could do that on top of maybe another piece of plywood but I actually used solid wood and here we have a face frame cabinet white oak stain with recessed panel doors now I'm showing this to explain how if this was frameless you could not create this same look at all and you can add these feet down below give it that look and then here's a framed inset drawer um, looks like it's sticking out a little bit but I hopefully that was fixed and you know there's a extra tall panel here so this dies into that so with a face frame you you can do all that kind of stuff you can create the panel lower than you need to I mean lower to accommodate that and yeah so here again with face frame you can create what looks like a piece of furniture you couldn't do that with frameless this whole open area down here that that wouldn't work with frameless it would be an added piece it would just get more complicated than it needs to be so with this you can have, have this frame go all the way to the floor and create like a bottom shelf and over here the frame goes all the way to the floor with a frameless you would definitely have to have some sort of added piece down below 
you would have some filler pieces on the end. It's just way more complicated than just making one frame. This is actually two cabinets. This is an upper and a lower. To get this upstairs, I had to create two boxes. There is actually a seam right here, but the same piece was cut so that that would flow through with the stain. Um, it's almost invisible. You couldn't see it from a distance. And this was a super custom situation with an angled ceiling in there. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video. Okay, so that covers that. So here we have a frameless wall of cabinetry. It is at the end of uh, that same kitchen I showed you in the beginning. And these are all flat gray lacquer finish doors. Pocket doors are, this is a pair of pocket doors and this is a pair of pocket doors and these are refrigerator and freezer panel and these are all fixed panels up here and you can see I have a surrounding uh, trim molding going around and that makes it look flush and set again and if you will also notice on this uh, I scribe to this off kilter uh, the ceiling really moves around and uh, what else? I'll show you on the next slide. This is the two boxes, frameless, of course, with these pocket doors. I will never do it like this again because I had a no bottom. And 30 or so inches deep, it was hard to secure this and make it completely square. And uh, I'm not sure how I would do it again. I guess. Uh, Maybe you can put in the comments section below how you would do that. And you could put a bottom in and maybe they could run the new floor on the new bottom, I guess, if the floor is high enough. This filler piece, you see those pocket screws? This is screwed to there with pocket screws after, before it was mounted up. And on this side, I did the same thing. I attached this piece using pocket screws because I knew I was gonna put a, that gray trim piece on top. And here it is all done with the pocket doors showing, exposing the washer dryer in here, and these uh, rollouts over here. And I wish I had some of that on video because it, it was uh, quite the chore. I should say so myself. So here is a job that was both face frame in set and frameless at the same time. And because there's no rules, you don't, I, I've never gone by the rule that you have to go all frameless if that's what you're doing. It depends on what the customer wants, really, and also the look that you're trying to achieve. So this was Rift White Oak, and it was flat slab doors and door fronts, vertical grain throughout. So that means that the grain actually was vertical grain going through. So that would be called a bank match. And when they're matched door to door, they don't have to on, they do have to in this whole unit here, the grain is all matching. So that's called uh, bank match up and down and then book match is side to side. And yeah. So let's see, medicine cabinets built in on the both sides. You can see on this side that door is on there. It's actually a bifold. And I'll show you that in another slide. There's a rolling hamper that goes in on the right here inside of here. There were basket pullouts here, and I'll show you, but this is a obviously a very angled ceiling. And in order to create this box that had access on both sides, it needed a frame. And this was a very thin one at that. And this is a fixed panel to look like a door because on this side of it, like uh, over here, you can see that there's a medicine cabinet there. And that this, uh, the splash ends here. I'll show you what's going on in this area on the next slide or two. Okay, so here um, I added this wood piece on top for the tile before they grouted. And what else can I show you here? The knobs are on obviously. You can see how much different it looks with knobs and handles. And from that view, you see the medicine cabinet here. So there's that bifold door and how that's all fit to the ceiling. Uh, here's all those pullouts in the base. I don't think I'll do these again because they were kind of not the greatest in adjustability. Every one of these drawer fronts, by the way, has an eighth of an inch solid wood border going around them rather than a very thin veneer. 
So that's another way you can change the look of it. Yeah, so I found a slide that had this eighth of an inch border showing on these doors and drawer fronts, a much closer up view. You can see it there. And it's definitely a different way of doing it rather than the thin veneer I mentioned earlier that's done most done on most frameless boxes. And I didn't actually mention the drawers, but on slab drawer fronts, it's the same thing. It's a very thin veneer that's usually put on there. But in this case, it was an eighth of an inch solid matching rift white oak. And this is, happens to be a little bit darker because you'll never get the same coloring on a uh, veneer versus solid wood. As part of this job, there was a niche on each side of the bathroom and this wall was made to go up against there. You can see on the next slide here how it's all neat and tidy. Um, so there's that as well as the fact that this, this being all face frame and this base cabinet here is frameless. Um, it was just a decision I made to accommodate obviously the uh, side cabinet as well as the front and this was a very honestly a very complicated cabinet this was added in afterwards and maybe on another video I might show the construction of this baby so there you go thank you so here's a face frame overlay job and I mentioned about face frame I've been doing all face frame and set ever for years now and this is a much rarer thing that was uh, in the beginning of my days this was super common where the doors overlay the frame. There was usually a breadboard at the top. I rarely do that anymore. Uh, what else is unusual about this? A lot of hoods are custom, so you don't see that. Not too often. And what else? Well, that's a nice old oven. Uh, I did this one a long time ago. And uh, they wanted the retro kind of style. I actually did a retro sink on this one. You know, I should show that. That was really cool. So I found the pictures of that retro sink I was talking about. Both photos here. And yes, I did go in set for some reason on this corner of the kitchen. I had to do some interesting notching of this particular cabinet to fit that sink properly on there. There was a lot of things going on under the sink. So anyways, I thought that was cool, so I thought I'd show that. See here, now here it, again in set, but this one has some really cool added detail here with these columns to the floor and this apron sink. Um, you can see the apron sink works really good with a inset type of job. And this particular one didn't go to the ceiling. It was in a kind of a basement kitchen. Uh, I think it was really cool. I, I love this detail here. So here is a frameless acrylic kitchen, glossy white doors. This is an installation that I did. I did not build these cabinets. And what this is is a Gola design. I don't know why it's called that, but you see these spaces here? That's actually your handle hole in order to open these doors or these drawers. That's how you do it, just with that spacing there. It's over here, and it's on the, the refrigerator is a push to open. And these are open some large pullouts here and here. And I'll explain a little more probably on the next slides here. I built these. This is on another job. And each cabinet has these notches. And this is where that metal strip goes across. And it also goes uh, inside in between these two drawers. Um, yeah. So let's see here, and there it is. This is the metal piece that gets put on, and there's those clips that hold it in place. So you do that in the field, this, this part, and you can't see it here, but there's the same metal strip in here. And that gives you your finger pull, basically. You still can go with slab drawer fronts, but this allows that spacing for a finger pull. And then of course I do the same thing. I make this flush, do that inset look, this is an added panel. Yeah, I'm mainly showing you this Gola design. All right. And on the next slide here, this is that whole kitchen that was done with the Gola design. You'll see the, the gaps here between those drawers. And you'll see it really well there. So there's no panel yet on this dishwasher here. Okay, on the uppers, 
you you would just open it by pulling on the bottom and here I added these panels and they have to be scribed to the walls and made flush to go with the face so that's a lot of infield work and that's why I say that frameless are can be more difficult to install they there's not this frame structure to work with so you always have to add these pieces and they have to end up flush with your doors and that can be a lot of work uh, overall though I think uh, the design is great okay these are this this was two doors access into the corner there here's another frameless uh, way of doing something and it's actually to build a frameless box like you see here so I sped this up but I'm building a box here and it's frameless and I'm putting the drawer fronts inside the box so it's like an inset frameless and you can see here how that works I was using sticks to line things up and such but you'll see here it's just frameless and I We'll probably show another photo showing how it went into the job itself into a uh, closet so yeah just thought I'd add that as a little bonus to show you that there are no you can break the rules now and again all right so yeah that should help you with an understanding of how you can really mix and match designs to create the effect you want and it's always fun to and challenging sometimes to not stick with a set uh, way of doing something. So as a final thought, that's why I'm in the thinking position, as a final thought I would say that frameless versus face frame is a bad way of saying it. It's face frame or frameless. What are you gonna do, what method are you gonna use in order to achieve the look that you want? which one will give you that final result the best that's the one you want to use all right thanks for watching all the way through but I'm not quite done yet I would like you to put down in the comment section anything you would like for a future episode that would be awesome thanks again and subscribe thanks